Hey, this is a screencast series called Vim on Alphabet. My name is Josh Branshaw, and this is episode six. In this episode, we'll be looking at the at symbol. The first and by far most common use for the at symbol is for replaying macros that you've recorded to a register. As a basic example of what that looks like, we're going to record a macro that can be used to replace JavaScript function syntax uh, with the anonymous function syntax. Though this is no error-proof code mod, this naive approach will get you pretty far in saving a lot of keystrokes. We will record this macro to register f using qf. So let's jump to line 26 and start recording. Right as we hit qf, you can see here that it is recording. We'll jump to the start of the line with zero, then we'll replace the word function with const, then jumping to the opening paren, we'll insert space equals space, hitting escape back into normal mode, and then jumping to the closing paren, we'll then append space followed by the fat arrow syntax. Hit escape once more to land back into normal mode, and that's it for our macro. To stop recording, we hit Q, and everything we just typed will be stored in the F register. So we have this one example of a transform function that we had to do manually. Let's see how we can take advantage of that work and save some keystrokes. We can replay it here, but first let's take a look at register F. The encoding is a bit different than what I typed above, but you can see the similarity. All we need to do to replay this macro from our current cursor position is to hit at F. Hey, that looks pretty good. I'll also point out that we can simply hit at at to replay the previously played macro. So if we undo the previous transformation, we just hit at at, and then the line is transformed back. What I've been calling macros are referred to in the help files as complex repeats. So you can look them up that way for more details. Additionally, we can use the at symbol to repeat the previous x command. If you remember from the previous episode on the bang symbol, we are able to read in the output of an external command, like the calendar command. It reads it right into the buffer. Now we can, say, do that four more times by hitting for at colon. Whoa, that's a lot of April. Let's undo that. I don't have a great example of how you'd use this, but Vim is all about having a ton of composable building blocks, so it's nice to know that this is available. The last thing I want us to look at is how we can use the at symbol in a number of different Perl-esque pattern matching modifiers, referred to in the help files as multis. The at symbol is part of several of them, but let's just look at this one, which allows us to match against some pattern in a capture and treat it as a zero-width character as long as the pattern that follows matches. The zero-width character part means that it won't advance the matching cursor or be affected by a substitution. I realize that's a bit of a mouthful, so let's take a look at an example. I wanted to come up with a non-foobar example, so even though this is still a bit contrived, um, here's some JSX that needs a little cleaning up. Just to give some context behind this example, if a Boolean prop is receiving a literal value of true, then it should just stand on its own. Its presence alone makes it true. So let's say we have a whole file of these, how might we go about cleaning it up while hopefully avoiding a bunch of false positive matches? I say we can do it with this weird matcher. So highlighting the whole thing, we start a substitute command where we have a capture group for a prop name, which can be lower and uppercase characters, any number of them. Then we use this multi, which is going to match this first part of the pattern, zero width, as long as it is followed by this literal Boolean true bit. You can see the highlighted match right here. And then we can replace it with, in this case, nothing. And then we add C here on the end to have it check the substitution. And we say yes, and that's the only match that gets modified. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use these. If you want to see a bit more about these matchers, you can check the help files for this one and scroll down to see the others. And as always, if you're curious what else the at symbol can be used for, check out colon h at, hit tab, and you'll see what else is available. That's it for this one. In the next episode, we'll look at the pound symbol.